Hi, I am Elle Strauss. I am a YA author. I write otherworldly type YA, and my um, latest book is called Clockwise, about a teen time traveler who accidentally takes her secret crush back in time. And today I'm going to talk about the evolution of the cover because um, I, my blog friend D.L. Hammond asked me if I would do this. He's curious, and so I thought, yeah, okay, I'll give it a try. So when I decided to uh, publish Clockwise independently, I knew I was going to have to do everything um, myself, things that a traditional publisher would normally take care of, including a cover. And so I really was kind of at a loss at the beginning because I don't know cover designers. I've never tried to contact one. I don't actually live in a big city or anything something like that maybe would happen. I didn't know any other authors uh, who had did the, their own cover either. So I was kind of trying to brainstorm um, for myself. So I had this idea that um, maybe I would get my photographer friend to take a picture of my daughter, maybe do some kind of pose or whatever, and then my friend Kim could work her photography magic. And give me this great cover. And she's also my photographer friend who did my uh, promo pics and uh, did a lovely job there. So actually I had gotten this idea from another author I had read about who had used her daughter in a Photoshop for her cover and it turned out great. So I approached my daughter, her name is Tassia, and I asked her, you know, what she think, thinks about this. You know, she's kind of tall and pretty and a teenager and I thought, you know, Kim could do something with this. Um, but Tassia, she wasn't too keen on the idea. <laughs> she didn't want to be my cover model, I don't know why. So later that night she came to me and she was sort of holding this piece of paper and she's like, Mom, I've got this idea for your book cover and I don't know if you like it or not, but you know, here it is. So she presented me with this. And what I'll do is I'll show you the paper and then I'm going to insert the scan of it so you can see it more clearly and that will sort of pause this video a bit but then it will come back. So this, I don't know if you can see it, there is a sketch drawing on a lined piece of paper. And I looked at it and I was quite surprised because A, I didn't know my daughter could draw. She doesn't actually take any art classes. She's more of a science girl. And um, so I was very pleasantly surprised and I could uh, definitely see some potential there. So my only concern was that the um, focus of the, of the image, the drawing of Casey, the girl, that rep the drawing that represents Casey, was on the wrong side of the page because people write, read left to right, um, sort of your focal point needs to be more from left or right. And so I asked her to just give me another copy without the lines and, and switch, the, reverse the image. So she was able to do that. And then, uh, and then I, I scanned that and I, I went to my friend so I'll take a little pause here so you can see the scan. <laughs> so I went back to Kim, my photographer friend, because she also happens to be an art of, artist of many disciplines. She's a singer-songwriter and she also paints. So I thought, well, maybe instead of taking a, photo a photograph, and working with that, I can work with an image uh, and maybe she can paint it for me. So she took it and, and for whatever reason, I don't know, painting things that much, it didn't wasn't working out. And so she had an idea that at a photography class, she had met a guy who did um, Adobe Illustrator. And she took it to him and they played around with it for a while. And I actually had never heard of Adobe Illustrator. I had heard of Photoshop, but not Adobe Illustrator. And I'm so glad that this, this sort of turn of events happened because this was a real um, uh, eye-opening for me and very useful for future covers I can see this 
knowing that this technology right. exists. So Kim, you know, she'd never used Adobe Illustrator, and she worked with this guy for a little bit, and they came up with a, um, a sort of a beginning uh, version of the copy of the book cover. So I will insert this that here so you can can see what that looks like. So anyways, when you uh, <clears throat> take a look at the cover, you can see that uh, there was a lot of strong direction there in terms of some of the color choices. Uh, you know, we needed to do some work with the font and um, all of that. So this was where I spoke to my husband, who is a musician, and he was telling me about a friend of ours who was doing his CD cover. And our friend's name is Nico Houston, and uh, you can check him out at Nico, that's N-I-C-O, groove.com. And he's going to be doing more design and cover work in the future. So I called Nico up and I said, uh, hey, I know you're doing my husband's uh, norm. <laughs> norm, I know my husband's name, uh, CD cover. And you know, would you consider doing a book cover? So we met up and I sh showed him where we had gotten so far with Kim and we talked about other changes that I wanted to see done to it. I would wanted um, texture so it did look like it was painted on canvas even though it wasn't. And um, you know, just sort of a darker palette with the trees and uh, improving sort of some depth and the, and the font work. So we worked together to pick out a pick out font that we liked and, um, and he went to work and did that. And so that is how the book cover for Clockwise came about and I will end this vlog um, with the cover of the final cover of Clockwise and also if you want to come to my blog, you can visit me at lstraussbooks.blogspot.com.